A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to salute you and to first of all appreciate you for being our faithful follower, our fan. We don't take it for granted. We are so glad. And today I want to give yet another uh, lecture in a series of lectures that we've been having in the recent past. And today's lecture is going to be about leukocyte extravasation during inflammation. Uh, it's going to be delivered by yours sincerely, Stephen K, the resilient guy. And the lecture comes to you courtesy of the immune system explainer YouTube channel. And before we proceed, I'd like us to have a look at uh, the, uh, the, the, the outline. And I think I need to underscore the importance of information even before I can talk about the lesson outline. Inflammation is an immune response. It's both, it can be both protective and destructive sometimes. It can be both protective and pathological. Uh, inflammation has been talked about a lot, a lot because of being associated with serious disease conditions like autoimmune diseases. Um, hypersensitivity situations are always associated with inflammation, uh, even immunodeficiency situations. Uh, cancer has got massive inflammation, so that is how important it is. Now, in this uh, lesson, we're going to be talking about uh, the explanation or rather definition of what inflammation is. Then we shall have a look at uh, the cardinal size of information. That is what most people know about the cardinal size. And sometimes they actually think information is all about cardinal size. Then we're going to be talking about a very important aspect of information, and that is extravasation steps. How leukocytes roll inside the blood vessels, how they adhere to the cell attached molecules. Uh, then we talk about diabetes, then we talk about chemotactic guided or chemotactic guided migration of immune cells, leukocytes, out of the blood vessels to go to the inflamed tissue. Now let's begin by uh, looking at what information is. Information is a complex immune response. Uh, to local injury or trauma that may be triggered by an invading pathogen. Information may be acute, where it has sudden onset. It might uh, be chronic, where it's going to be persistent and damaging to tissues of your body. Uh, the cardinal signs of information sometimes, uh, you know, this is what people really know about. And when you talk about information, people think that information is actually synonymous to swelling. While well, swelling is actually just one of the many cardinal signs. So we have the English names here, but the Latin names in parentheses. Uh, so uh, the, the cardinal signs of information include redness, heat, swelling, pain and loss of functions and all these cardinal signs are actually as a result of vascular changes that happen to your body when uh, you have an inflamed tissue so the vascular changes we're talking about here are the ones that are responsible for uh, the cardinal signs so cardinal signs are as uh, are a result of vascular changes within a few minutes of information and uh, this uh, this uh, this changes include vascular diameter increasing there's going to be an increase in blood uh, volume in the area of information the other thing that was going to happen is that there is going to be reduced rate of blood flow so the volume increases but the speed at which blood flows is going to become slower uh, then we shall have uh, vascular permeability increasing so there's going to be more more uh, you know permeable 
um, network of mem membrane of the blood vessels and as a result of that uh, there is going to be leakage of fluids into the tissues surrounding uh, that particular blood vessel then the most critical part of this uh, lesson today is extravasation uh, various cytokines and other inflammatory mediators act on the local blood vessels and as a result of that there's going to be increased expression of vascular cell attachment molecules along the endothelium uh, for the white blood cells to enter the inflamed tissue the cells must roll along the endothelial cells that is one then they must adhere to the cell attachment molecules then it is only when they are there or they bind to the cell attachment molecules that they're going to be able to pass between the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels and that is going to be aided by the cell attachment molecules and as a result of that they're going to squeeze in between the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels and get out of the blood vessel to go to the inflamed tissue this process of exiting the blood vessel to go to the inflamed tissue is called extravasation. Recirculating lymphocytes, granulocytes, and monocytes bear receptors, and these are the receptors that bind to the cell attachment molecules so that these white blood cells can bind before uh, they, they can exit, they can extravasate. Binding allows the cells to finally or ultimately be able to extravasate the tissues surrounding um, So um, that's a diagram uh, courtesy of QB immunology 6th edition by WH Freeman and company uh, So if you look at these ladies and gentlemen, I need to get a laser to be able to uh, point to this yeah that's okay so we've said there's going to be rolling so that uh, the white blood cells are going to roll along the endothelia lining the blood vessels then as a result of that they're going to be activated remember we've said that this uh, white blood cells these leukocytes have got receptors that are going to bind to the cell attachment molecules on the endothelial cells and then stick there before uh, uh, so the sticking is what we're calling uh, being arrested or a fearing and then after that they're going to squeeze in between endothelial cells to get out and that's what we call uh, extravasation uh, there are four different families of cell affection molecules that are involved in inflammation and these include selectins, mucins, integrins and immunoglobulin superfamily cell affection molecules. Um, then uh, we, we have another group of cytokines, let me call them cytokines and they are called chemokines actually and chemokines are a family of small polypeptides with a molecular mass of between 8 and 10 kilodaltons secreted by the body cells and they selectively control attention, chemotaxis and activation of many uh, of uh, the, 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 the players of an inflammatory response So what happens here yeah, is that we have a diagram, uh, the molecular structure or the three-dimensional molecular structure of chemokines. You may be interested in having a look at that. Now, for instance, CXCL8, which is also called interleukin-8, acts as a chemoattractant for neutrophils and helps them uh, follow increasing localized concentration of chemokines to be able to migrate uh, you know, to, the, to, to, the, to the site of injury. So what happens is that uh, there is going to be targeted recruitment of phagocytic cells uh, you know, following chemotaxis 
uh, so that they're not going to miss the point of information but they're going to be directed right to the point of information. Uh, we have a very important diagram here that shows you the different roles or the roles of different site kinds. Uh, we have interleukin 1 beta, uh, which is involved in both local effects and systemic effects. Local effects is where we have the effect, uh, you know, just around the inflamed tissue, and then systemic effects, uh, the effects that can actually uh, go through the blood circulation to manifest. Uh, maybe sometimes all over the body or in some other parts other than the inflamed place. So uh, different cytokines, different players are going to have different, um, uh, you know, effects. We've just said that CXCL8 is going to be a chemoattractant factor recruiting neutrophils, basophils, and T cells to the site of infection. Uh, we have um, the natural killer cells, which induces the differentiation of the CD4 T cells into the TH1 cells and the TH1 cells, uh, the CD4 positive TH1 cytokines, uh, I mean uh, lymphocytes are the ones that are involved in production of all these pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, that we have around here, uh, tumor necrosis factor, uh, interleukin 6, uh, interleukin 8, interleukin 12, all of this uh, inflammatory. These other cytokines could be involved in various activities including increasing uh, the vascular permeability of the blood vessels. Then uh, the, here comes uh, the role of the complement system. The complement system, some of the components of the complement system, particularly the C3A and C5A are anaphylatoxins, um, you know, and um, so what happens is that um, uh, the binding of C3A and C5A anaphylatoxins to their receptors on the membranes of mast cells induces degranulation and when mast cells degranulate, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to release histamines and other pharmacologically active inflammatory mediators and these are going to be involved in increasing the rate of inflammation. So these substances induce smooth muscle contraction and increased vascular permeability, uh, particularly C3A, C5A, C5B, uh, C6 and C7 act together to induce monocytes and neutrophils to adhere to the vascular and endothelial cells and then migrate to the site of inflammation. Okay, that is what happens. Uh, we have another picture here that shows you some other players other than the pharmacologically active uh, you know, players that we've just talked about, the histamine and uh, the C3, C5, A, which are the, the, the complement system uh, players. We have some other lipids, um, uh, I mean, or players that originate from lipids, including prostaglandin, G2, leukotrins, uh, among others, and they're involved in many, many activities, including vasoconstriction and, um, uh, you know, the, of, the, of the platelet, vasoconstriction, platelet aggression, and other effects, we have uh, some of them being in, uh, uh, involved in vascular dilation, you know, neutrophil chemotaxis, vascular permeability, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, uh, there is one slide here that is very important, ladies and gentlemen. This one summarizes everything that we've talked about in as far as inflammation is concerned. And before I can point out to some few things here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've learned that inflammation is a very important process. Uh, it is an inflammatory, it's a very important uh, immune response that can be protective it, if it lasts for a long, for a, for a short time and then resolves within a short time. But the misfortune is when, uh, you know, inflammation uh, persists for quite some time, whether it becomes 
where it becomes a chronic inflammation because in that case it's going to be accompanied by damage of tissues and other important components of your body so if you look at this slide uh, ladies and gentlemen it shows the white blood cells in a blood vessel the neutrophils the monocytes and the lymphocytes the, the cell accession molecules here the p-selectins uh, lfa uh, one and uh, the uh, the integrin cell accession molecule one uh, you know so on and so forth so we said this have to stick together they have to bind together remember the white blood cells we've said have receptors they're going to bind to the cell accession molecules and then finally we're going to have different white blood cells exiting or extravasating the blood vessels we've uh, talked about the role of histamines prostaglandins leukotrienes acting upon the vascular endothelium uh, we've uh, talked about uh, c3a and c5a as components of the complement system or products of the activation of the complement system that are also going to be involved and uh, other uh, components that may be involved include activated macrophages bradykinin uh, so on and so forth so that marks the end of our lecture ladies and gentlemen i hope you've been able to enjoy so we continue making our usual appeal that you subscribe to our youtube channel the immune system explainer youtube channel so you can be able to enjoy our services uh, we also call upon you to subscribe to our main website theimmunestudies.com uh, also referred to as the immune system explainer website and that way you can be able to read many many articles including uh, one on inflammation the one that we've just talked about here today and that is going to be very helpful to you as even as you promote our site to grow even further thank you thank you very much for your support i thank you and i really really appreciate you for holding us walking the journey with us thank you thank you thank you very much